Okay, so test number three, guys. I mean, test number two is going to be four problems. How many problems? Four problems in the calc. One problem will be motors on a feeder and do the calculation for it. And we have done, I think, two at least two examples about that before last week. That's problem number one, motors. Problem number two, HVAC, heating ventilation, chillers, basically. Same thing. Two chillers on a feeder and do the calculation. Two chillers on the feeder and do the calculation. Um, and problem number three would be PDU. You guys have a copy of it, right? Will be PDU, UPS sizing. You guys remember what we did with the PDU UPS sizing? We did the same thing, PDU and UPS sizing. And problem number four is matching a transformer to a pen. So these are one problem each on the test. Cool? Everybody's okay with this? All right, so what we do... Um, you can see... So um, you can see there's, there's a feeder at the top with a fuse disconnect and feeding a gutter and the gutter is feeding a combination starter i remember it was sitting right here the combination starter a disconnected fuse a contactor and overload two of them for two motors the system is 480 the full load amber the name plate 75 90 horsepower 60 75 temperature 50 no temperature given to the second one code letter l and service factor for the second one is 1.5, and the code letter for the second one is M. Everybody knows how to read these. You guys have seen it before with me, right? Can I have thumbs up, Chad? The format is seen. Okay. So your job and mine is to go size these seven things. Cool? Now, tomorrow, guys, on the test, I don't give you a graphic like this, but I ask you size the brand circuit for the motor, size the disconnect, so you should kind of interpret it. Cool? Everybody's good with that? So keep an eye on all this information um that we're going to do so let's go ahead and uh now that we know what we're going to do here's what i have for you guys and i suggest to do the same thing if i can read my handwriting here so we have motor number one motor number two and the code references are all here if you cannot read any of these please let me know i will be more than happy to read it for you um if you if there's anything you need to read this is the second time that we have like i said we've done these um or the third time this time so i'm going to go answer and, and, uh, and, uh, and calculate all these things that we have um so we have a bright circuit number one everybody can see that we are such a bright circuit this way over condition device number three for the controller five is the overload and we have a starting um current at the bottom the starting current they will ask about the starting um, current for the motors and so, should we go ahead and start? Everybody good? I'm not going to go over these, guys. We have done the references. You have the references. But you will be required to do the references. Write the references. You will have, by the way, for the test, you'll see a sheet like this tomorrow. So you are supposed to fill the references. Um, if you, you want to put these on a piece of paper, bring them to the test fine with me. Um, all the how to calculate, bring it with your cheat sheet, fine. But I don't want to see the exam. So let's go ahead uh, and use which color is blue? Let's use red. Can you guys see red? Okay. So um, so we start guys by finding the full load current from the NDC, full load current. And my full load current for this baby is 77 amps. And you guys are familiar with this, and this guy is 96 amps. The full load for this as you can see as um, as indicated that's your full load uh then the branch circuit atom if you go to 430.2032.30 i think this is 32 um dot 32 you're going to find um that you multiply by 1.25 so very easy 1.25 multiply this one by 77 and if i get my math right you might have to check my math on that one, guys. It's 96, 96 amps. That's kind of an interesting. And you take the same thing, 1.25, multiply it by 96 here for this guy, and you end up 120, 120 amps. And then you go to 310 of 15 B16 on the 75 degree column, here, and you're going to have three conductors. Each one of these conductors is number three, A, W, G, T, H, H, N. For this guy, for this guy, 
You will also have the cleave. The size of the conductor is going to be number one. A W G T H H N. Straightforward, no gimmicks. Nothing. Famira, Famira to you guys, you did two examples for me. You did uh, a homework and we did two examples and this is the third time. Hopefully we'll stick. Okay, so that's your uh, branch circuit conductors. Number two is a disconnect. Am I going too fast, too slow, too? So a disconnect. For your disconnect atoms, we say the multiplier is 1.15 for my disconnect. So we got uh, my um, my disconnect is 1.15. So we go 1.15 times the same thing 77. And when you guys go there, uh, you're gonna end up with 89. Please check that one. 89 amps. Take it to you're gonna take it to Dewalt 3-12. Make sure the sheet that I gave you guys and the standard disconnect is gonna be 100 amps. Then you send a 1.15 multiplied by 96. When you do this one, gentlemen, you will end up with 288. Uh, uh, no, Chad, what you were looking at here. Uh, you're going to end up with 110. Thank you. 110 amp. And that will give you, move you into a 200 amp category. 200 amp category. Any question guys about the disconnect? 1.15, always. No gimmicks in that. Now, number three atom is over friction device. I'm asking you to do a dual element type that I do. So guess what's going to be tomorrow, Matt? I will change it into a different type. So the multiplier will be different. For over friction device, you have to go to table 430.52. The two is right here. 52. And get the multiplier. Adam, your options are three, 175, 300%, 175%. 250% or 800, depending on what type of work you should advise. You, you, it will be very clear what type. So please pay attention to this one. I'm saying uh, this is not time to let you use the multiplier, guys, for this one. If the table is almost 300, which is 33. Multiply this value by 77, and you're going to get yourself a healthy 231 amps. When you take it to the next standard, it will be 250, because we always go up on that one. Same thing for this, 3 multiplied by 96. The maximum over temperature device that you are allowed to do is 288 amps, and that will move you into the category of 300 amps. 300 amps, and you go up. The point allow you to go up. That's the maximum. Now, can you put lower than this? Be my guest. So that's your um, over competition device, guys. Any comments, any questions about over competition device? Straightforward. The only thing, Derek, that you need to pay attention to is it will be changed tomorrow. Controller. Controller, number four is, is looking at the controller. Am I going too fast, too slow, with speed? Okay. Now for your controller, my friend, um, number four controller, my controller, you need the horsepower was, what is it, 60? For controller, you need 60 horsepower <laughs> at 480 volt, three phase. And this is 75 horsepower at 480 volt, three phase. So that's what you, you need. If you guys go to DeWalt 6-4, you guys remember that? Using DeWalt 6-4, it will get you an email. Anima. This is anima number four, and this one anima number both of them anima number four. Now, when you guys go there, make sure you know how to use this table. Uh, you go three phase first, and under that particular voltage, which is 480, and then it will tell you anima four can get you up to this horsepower. You pick the one that includes the horsepower that you're looking for. Overload. For the overload atom, um, I don't know if you guys remember, motor number one has a service, motor number one has, that's based on the um, temperature. Can you guys see the temperature rise for motor number one is 15. Uh, service factor for motor number one is 115. Okay. 
So based on these values, my motor number one um, for the overload is going to be 1.15 1, 1. 1. because the service factor, guys, is not given and the temperature rise is more than 40. So you default to 115. And you always use an inflate value, which is 75. These 75 amps <laughs> are put in a different color. The nameplate value, like we did before, and this will get you 88 amps and bit or 80, 86 amps. 86 amps. And then you go and you sit your you sit it at 86 amps or as close as you can to it. The second motor um, Karen has a service factor of 115, which triggers you to use the 125. Now 150. So 1.25. Can you please pay attention to the 150 versus 1.25 based on the description then add up you want to multiply this baby by the name plate for this guy which is 90 90 and then that will get you a healthy uh, healthy what 113 113 amps and that will get you 113 amps is the setting for this overload section device um, this is 430.32 will get you this information 430 then this is it should be 430.22 at the end there. There you go. Get confused. 430.22. You always you guys always can check these. Any comments, guys? Any questions? Comments, questions about the overload? Overload is tricky. Right at the bottom here, I'm ask I'll ask you guys to find a short circuit calculation. This is short circuit. Or um, um I'm sorry, starting current, starting current, believe it or not, not short circuit chair, we're going to short circuit, but starting current. Starting current, guys, from this table, 430.7B, and the code letter, can you guys see the code letter? The code letter L and M, you go to the table, find the multiplier, and Adam, you're looking at 9.99. This is I locked, it's called I locked rotor current equal. You will take the 9.99, multiply that baby by 60, which is the horsepower, multiply it by 1,000, divide everything by uh, 1.73 for three pairs, and the 480, because the system is 480. Gentlemen, uh, this should give you quite in a different color here, uh, 722, 7, 2, and 2 amps, 722 amps, equal all this, 722 amps. Do the same thing for the other one, guys, R, locked rotor current, equal 75, the multiplier is 11.19, 11, 11 I believe, multiply it by 75, times 100, a thousand to me, it's not ten thousand, a thousand chair. A thousand divide this by 1.73 and 480. And <laughs> everything, gentlemen, you came up with 101, 1011M is what your in rush is. And you guys, everybody knows what we're doing, nothing new, huh? Review, otherwise, we will. You just find the number, the upper limit, Karen. When you go there, there are two numbers, upper and lower limit. The worst scenario is upper limit. Comments, questions, gentlemen? Make sense? No? So basically, here's all the five things they need to do, including the starting current of this motor. Good, Adam, good okay the last thing guys we need to find a few things about uh for the feeder a few things we need to find for my feeder so my feeder over temperature device the NDC code book guys you take the largest fuse in your system you add to it the full load current of the other motors and you end up with v77 and you have to go down so you go down to 350 amps. The trickiest thing over the past guys is people go up. We go up on the brand circuit, down on the feeder, or uh, on the feeder of the device. 
The conductor feeder is 1.25 bars multiplied by the fattest, fluffiest conductor. And then you add to it a 77, and that will get you carrying 197 amp. And these are sevens, sometimes I write them differently. Okay, and then that will translate in three conductors, number three, hot, A, W, T, H, F, N. Straightforward. And done. Gentlemen, here is one fourth of the test. Very straightforward, no gimmicks. Now, a lot of calculation goes, but really straightforward. And only one problem this time. I don't want to harass you with two on the test. You know how to do one like this? You got your 100% uh, out of the one fourth. <laughs> Should we go to the second fourth? Derek, does it make sense? Yeah. You did the homework, you guys. If you did the homework, exactly what the same homework. Okay, Karen, good. All right, the next problem, gentlemen, question number two is the same thing except for an HVAC, an AC unit, a chiller. Chillers are special equipment. The code treats them separately with a separate code with a slight, not a whole lot difference, but slightly different. Here's what I have, guys. I have two chillers or two AC units connected to a feeder, and I need to size the feeder conductor, the, fu the disconnect for the feeder, the fuse for the feeder, um, as well as the conductor, of course. And then I'm going to go, I need to size the uh, disconnect for each one of these AC units, plus the fuse, plus the conductor. Now, do you guys remember in the example that I gave you, I sized also the equipment grounded conductor? I mean, it's not hard to size it, but I'm not asking. Here's the information atom on the nameplate of each one of these. It's an AC unit, a chiller, has something has a compressor in it. Full load L, given for both of them, 7560. Locked rotor current to size the disconnect is given as 460 right here. And they're all three pairs on the voltage is 480. All this is given. You guys drawn, you have a copy of it. So what do you need to do? You need to size all these six things this time. Exactly like we did on the test. Cool. So now let's go and start sizing them. Here's what I would like to go, guys. Um, so I put, you're going to see the same thing for these guys. Calculation coming in here. And we need to size the following, okay, for the AC, for each one of the ACs. Okay, so the first thing I would like to do, Adam, is a branch circuit. Branch circuit is, this is from 4, uh, 440.32. That will give you a table 310.15, 11, um, uh, B, uh, 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 310.15, <laughs> B, 16. It will tell you guys when you do this, baby, you have to multiply by 1.25. Uh, 1. Very easy, very simple. So you're going to take, um, uh, gosh, how to do that? So you take 1.25, multiply this one. What was the forward current, guys? Just a second ago. Thank you. 75, I can't, you know, read it so small. 75. And when you do this one, uh, you're going to end up with 77 amps. Please check that. 77 amps. Um, 77 amps. 94. 94. See, I told you I can't read it. 94 amps. 94 amps. I need to print them in a bigger format. I can't. <sighs> They have in 94, it's hard to see. And then when you guys take this one to the um, code, you will end up with three conductors. Number uh, three, A, W, G, T, H, H, N. For this baby, for the second baby, it's same thing, 1.25, multiply it by, what is this, 60? Yep. Thank you, 60, 75 amp. Hope that's right. And you're going to end up with three conductors. The size of these conductors is number four A, W, G, T, H, H, N. Done. Here's the conductors. Straightforward, no gimmicks, nothing.
For the over compaction device, guys, if you go to 440.22, it tells you 1.75. Your start point, 1.75 forward, multiply this one by 75. That will get you a healthy. Oh boy. Can somebody help? Um, 131. 131, 130, 1 amp, and then uh, you have to go down to, you always go down to 125 amp. For this one, same thing, 1.75 guys, you multiply this maybe by 60, you get yourself uh, 163. Anybody verify that? Uh, 105. Okay. Last time I would have printed that little, that little uh, print. 105, 105 amp. I should have known that because then you've got to go down to 100. Here is my fuses. Okay, that's my fuse size. Now for disconnect, guys, the disconnects are weird. You have to do a lot of calculation for this connect. See, all these calculations for this connect. Number one, you need to find disconnect based on forward current and disconnect based on horsepower, power, forward current and lock torque. So three calculations for the disconnect. First, the amp rating, then the horsepower rating. The horsepower rating, guys, is based on two values, full load amp and lock torque current, like we have done. Okay, for load amp, it's very easy. 1.15 amp, multiply this baby by 75, and then you get yourself an 86. Verify that one, and that will get you 100 amp. Done. Then the same thing here, 1.15, multiply this by 60, that will get you a healthy 69, 69 amps, and go up to the next standard, which is 100 amp. Disconnect, we, go always, we always go up on the disconnect. Uh, that's the amp size, done. The amp size is done. The second two calculation here, guys, is for the horsepower <laughs> size. For the horsepower size. So Adam, the first thing for the, you're going to take the uh, 75 amp, you're going to take it to table 430.250, and that will get you an equivalent of 16 horsepower. You're going to take the 60 amp here, full load amp, and that will get you the same thing. It will get you an equivalent of 50 horsepower. You can see what I'm doing. I'm taking these amps to a table 430.250 like we have done and finding the horsepower equivalent. For uh, disconnects, we need amp size and horsepower size. Okay. That's based on the so-called full load current. Full load current. Lock torque current amp. The lock torque current of the first one, we found it to be um, the lock torque current. Did I find the lock torque current for these? I did. Okay, the lock torque current is given. Can you see that? Here's my lock first based on these, the follow them. Next based on the lock torque current, 400 and 360. Okay. Based on 400 here, 400, take it to different table, 430.250B, 250B, right here, 250B, 251B, thank you, 251B, the one is sitting here. <laughs> so I have to adjust that somewhere. Okay, and that will get you, gentlemen, uh, you have uh, the proper one, so that's good. You have 60 horsepower here, 60 horsepower. Same thing, this guy, guys, 360, and take it to the same table, get you 50 horsepower. Then and which one are you going to choose? You're going to choose the largest of the two. The largest of the two is, will be this here, and will be this here. They're all the same, obviously, but you're going to pick the largest. So what size? Horsepower do I need? 60 horsepower here and 50 horsepower here. Does that make sense, guys? You choose the largest of the two calculations. Done. So this, the first one will be 100 horsepower, 60, 100 amp, 60 horsepower rated. The second one will be 100 amp, 50 horsepower rated. 
Number four, feeder. Yep. No, big deal. Cool? Yeah. Okay. The second thing, guys, we need the four. <clears throat> so basically, the size, we get the sizes here, right? You guys get the size. Here's what I'm looking for, these numbers, for the disconnect. For the feeder, guys, you choose <clears throat> 125, and 125 basically is this one, right? Yeah. Can you guys see that? Largest fuse plus the full load current of the other one, which is 60 for my feeder. Uh, plus 60, which is for my feeder. I'm going to get rid of all this. Okay, 60 for my feeder. And then uh, <coughs> that will get you a healthy 185 amps. Go down to the next standard, which is 175 amps. 175 amps. And this is coming from 440.22b and 240.6. Can you guys see where these coming from? Any comments, guys? Any questions about that? Straightforward? Cool. Next, um, number five is feeder disconnect. Feeder disconnect in amps. And the way they do the disconnect for the whole feeder in amps, in amps, can you guys see amps here? In amps, uh, 1.15 multiplied by the sum of the 75 plus 60. Can you guys emphasize that you first add it, then you multiply it, like we did for the feeder, then they get you 155 amps. I hope I'm getting it right, and that will translate into 200 amps. So if you are to have a disconnect for both motors, which is typically you don't. But if you are to have a disconnect for both motors, that's the size of a disconnect. Now, this is the amp size. We need the horsepower size. Remember, these two guys are horsepower, horsepower size. From the full load current, here's what you do. You take the 75 plus 60, the full load amp, that gets you 135 amp, add them up. Then you take the 135 amp, take it to this table, 450.250, and this will give you 125 horsepower. Same thing for the lock torture current. The lock torture current, guys, you take 400, and you add the 400 to the 300, 360, and that will get you a 760 amp. Then you take the 760 amp, uh, take it to table 4, 30.250B, 1B, and that will should get you one, two, so 125 again, 125 for this power. So which one I will use? They're at the same size, Chad, so I don't have to even worry about them. Does that make sense? So you pick the largest. So the, the, the horsepower rating of this would be 125 horsepower. You pick the largest of the two. Does that make sense? Cool. So that's the motor. The last thing we need to do, gentlemen, when you're done with this, does that make sense? <clears throat> For disconnects, you do two calculations. Amp, we know what the amp is easy. Add, add them up, multiple, add them up. Why did we add them up? Because we're talking about feeder, guys. And then for the horsepower, you add him up the full load current, go to the table, find the equivalent horsepower for the sum based on the full load current and based on the lock torture current and choose the largest horsepower that you come up with. Make sense? Okay. The feeder, the last thing is feeder conductors, basically. You take the 1.25 for the feeder conductor, guys, multiply it by uh, the largest, fattest, fluffiest uh, AC unit. And then, then you add to it the 60, exactly like we did with motors, gentlemen. And that will get you 100, 1, 5, 4 amps. And if you translate this, this will get you three conductors, number uh, 2 odd, 2 odd, um, 
Whatever it is, do on A, W, G, uh, T, H, H, M. Straightforward, no gimmicks. We're halfway through. Any comments, guys? Any questions? Any comments? Any questions? Straightforward, no gimmicks, nothing, Adam. So tomorrow, I expect you guys to have a cheat sheet with the formulas only. Um, okay. Question number three, Karen, is the following. We have a data center of 45 by 45 feet. Can you guys see that? The power density is 90. The system voltage is 480. The power factor is 80. 80 percent. Uh, I'm giving you the power factor. The losses. Can you guys see the losses? It's 10 percent losses. 10 percent losses. And I need to size the following. Size uh, basically the feeder coming to the UPS, the lower condition device, the UPS itself. Um, the circuit breaker that going to the PDUs and the conductor going to the PDUs. You guys remember that when we did it? Again, this is a review. Um, so we have done that one. We've done two two of these. You guys remember when we did two of them? And uh, you guys did the homework one. And now four things. So just a quick reminder. These are the five things that we need to do for this. So going all the way to the formula. Okay, I need your math because I did it differently last year. So... Um, the first thing to size the UPS size is you need to take the square foot multiplied by the density, the multiplied by the 1.1, which is the losses, uh, multiplied by the power factor. Okay. Is that what we did last time? The losses. System. Okay, we did that one. All right, now, um, Power factor, so let's go plug in the, the numbers that we have, guys. Uh, my UPS. I need your help here. So it is 45 times 45. That's the square foot of the building in feet. Multiplied by 90. Multiplied by the losses, which is 10%. Divided by the power factor. I'm giving you a power factor of 28. So make sure you stick the 0.8 here. And divide everything by a uh, thousand. When you guys are done, I need somebody to do the math. I did not do the math for this. Can somebody plug in the math, please? Please, please. Derek? 250.6. So 251. Second? 251 second. Okay, 251. 251 KVA. That's my KVA for the system. Okay, then you're going to take your, uh, then you're going to take your 251 KVA, take it to Chad's sheet. Remember that sheet that I gave you guys? Uh, the wall, and we draw them on 3 13. If you guys go to there, I believe it's 300. KVA is the standard. I want you guys to use this one as a, you know, you might be able to find industry less than that, but for the test, you basically go to industry standards. The next one will give me uh, 300, basically. Cool? So that's my 300. Done. Then you need to find our conviction device. Very easy. You need to find the current first, which is for the 300 K divided by 1.73 times 480. When you hit yourself uh, 361 amps, then you multiply it by 1.25 times 361 amps. Gentlemen, that will get you 400. 
152 amps, and you go to the next standard, which is uh, 500 amp. I have my 500 amp, next standard, 500 amp. Everybody knows where to go to find the next standard? The next standard is coming from 240.6. 240.6. Shall we? Good? Straightforward. Next, you need to find the conductor size, guys. The conductor size says match over conviction device, no problem. My over conviction device atom is 500 M divided by 2. What did you divide by 2? You hit the 400, what do you do? Hetero. So I got myself 250, 250 M. Gentlemen, take this one to a 3, 10, plus 15, P16 table. And that will get you two sets, two sets of uh, three conductors, two 50 kcm um, THHN. THHN. Now for the PDU guys, same sizing. For the PDU, sizing the PDU one and two. Ignore that line they're going. Same size, redundancy, same as UPS. You guys remember how we did that for the UPS? We went to just do it. Uh, we went 45 times 45. Um, hit that thing. Oh, 45 times 45. Uh, okay. Times 90 times 1.1 losses. Divide this one by um, 0.8 power factor times 100. I mean 1,000. You get yourself. What did we get? Uh, How much? 51. Thank you. 251 kVA. Then you take this one. 251 kVA. Take it to. Well, what was the 3 13? And that will get you 300. KVA. Done. Same calculation. So you don't have to do it tomorrow if it's. Now, the reason why I like to do it, though, because the, it, when you have the, if you have the literature, when you have the literature for UPS and PDUs, they might be different sizes. So you have to do the same calc, basically. Okay, gentlemen. <clears throat> With the over temperature device, the size of over temperature device, you need to do a few things. The first thing always is to find I, which is, we did this calculation, 300 K divided by 1.73 times 480. Uh, can somebody help me here? What did you come up with? 361. Thank you. 361 and so that's the, the size of our conviction device, guys. You take 1.25 multiplied by 361. We did this math too. Um, that will came up with 4, 452 amps. Uh, I'm sorry, for the PDUs, we do them slightly different. That's where we know what we're doing. For the PDUs, we do them slightly different because it's a transformer inside it. Uh, no. So PDUs, we use a 2.5 multiplier instead of 1.5, assuming there is a transformer. 2.5, 36, gets you 903. You go down to, and you take your 903, take it to 240.6, go down to 800. 800. 800. The PDU conductors, very easy guys, 1.25 times the same calculation, 361, and that will get you 452 amps. Take your 452 amps, divided by 2, and that will get you 226 amps. 
um, if you go here to table 3, 10, 15, 16, 75 degree column, that will get you two sets of three conductors, four out, A, W, G, T, H, H, N. So here's your conductors. Done with this, with the PDUs. Any comments, guys, any questions about the PDUs? Adam, the reason why we want to put this <coughs> multiplier here is because of the, there's a transformer inside the PDU. No, that's a maximum. Can you go lower than that, guys? Yeah. Definitely, you do coordination, you might be able to go to 500, down to 500. Okay, everybody's good? Yes, no, cool, PDUs. Let's go directly now, here's my PDUs, everything else. Let's go to industrial building. Now we need to size a transformer to a recept for a receptacle panel. Transformer for a receptacle panel. So Adam, here's what we have, we have industrial building. You created a receptacle load of 444 PVA, and we need to find the demand for it. And then after the demand, I would like you to size the transformer itself, which is number one, the overcapture device, um, the key feeder coming to a transformer, the overcapture device on the primary side, the delta, it's a 482 uh, 120. The feeder out of the transformer into the receptacle panel as well as the septical panel size and the overcompetition device. Everybody knows what we've done. You know, they've done these redundancy many, many times. Okay, the most important thing, guys, is the load. Here's my load. So the first thing you need to do based on the load, Adam, <clears throat> is apply the demand factor of the load. So when we go to our demand factor, so we got these. Um, okay, here we go. I need to apply demand factor. So from 220.44, guys, you're going to find the 44, take the 44, KVA. The first, uh, the first thing KVA, leave him alone. After 10, which is 44 minus 10, cut them by 0.5, and then add everything up, you're going to end up with a 27 K, KV. A. Oh, where's the K? VA. When you add them up, you will end up with 27 KVA demand load. Everybody understand the connected load? You guys know how we did the connected load? 180 times how many receptacles add them up. But because not all of them are going to be energized at the same time, Adam, look at the receptacle sitting here idling, right? So the code allows you table 220.44 to apply demand factor. That demand factor is the first 10, leave them alone. Anything higher than 10, cut it by half, add them up, 27. That's your start point. That's your demand point. They're going to be sizing everything for Not the 44. A lot of people in the past guys jump the 44 and start sizing. No, that's a huge transformer for nothing. Is it wrong to take the 44? No. <laughs> You're just throwing copper and equipment down. Okay, cool. Got that? Now, we're going to take the 27, which you guys have it now. 27, take it to the wall, 7 and 7, right? Um, and that will get you 30 kVA. 30 kVA. You're going to go to 30 kVA. So the size of my transformer, the big, fat, fluffy size of my transformer, is going to be 30 KVA. On the primary side, it's going to be 480 volt. On the secondary side, it's going to be 208 slash 120 volt. And there will be a winding that looks something like this. We're showing only for one piece. That's what you're going to do for a transformer. You don't have to, I got carried away. You don't have to draw that. Okay, next. I just have room to fill. <laughs> primary overcapture device. The primary overcapture device, guys, um, 
you go to fourth corner of 50.3b, <clears throat> you need to find the higher primary, which is 30k, divided by 1.73. The primary is 480 volt. When you do the math, you get end up with 36 amps. Then you should do 2.5 times uh, 36 primary protection, get you 90 amps. And then 90 amps, take it to the same to 240.6 and go down to 90 amps. It's a standard. And that's my max. Always remember, it's a maximum. All these are max. That's my um, primary protection device. For my primary conductor, guys, very easy. This is already 36 amps. You multiply 1.25 times 36. When you do your math on this one, Karen, you get your 45 amps. <clears throat> then you take your 45 amps, take him to the tourist, the famous table 3, 10.15, B16, 75 degree column. <clears throat> and that'll get you three conductors. Number uh, eight, A, W, G, T, H, H, M. <clears throat> Does that make sense? Straightforward, no gimmicks. Please, here's a common mistake, Derek, is when to go up and when to go down. Please write yourself a note. I get confused when to go up and to go down. Pull this information from that um, to make it easier for you. This is what we're going to do. On this example, when we do the transformer primer, we go down. Questions, guys? <clears throat> cool. Next, should I go move? Okay. Now the panel size. Now we need to go size my panel. For the panel size atom, <clears throat> we always size panel based on over temperature device. So I have a 30 kVA transformer, 1.73 times 208. The reason why I put the 208 was on the panel size is connected to the 208 side of the transformer. That will give me um, 83 amps, 83 amps. Okay? Then <clears throat> 1.25 multiply this one, huge of expansion, continuous load, what's now? Multiply by 83, and that will get me, my friends, 45 amps. And then you take your 45 amps to the wall. <clears throat> 1.25 times 83. I think I'm. Uh, that will, that will be, you know, I invented the math. Didn't you think so? If you, can prove, if you can prove that this equal to this, you invented no math. I'm not kidding you. You are the, you will be the richest man on earth if you do that. If you make it, prove it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or you just made a mistake. <laughs> I'm looking at the first slide here. <clears throat> so times 83, that will, should get you 104. That makes it. <laughs> We don't need to prove the 104, right? 104 AM, take it to 3 to 12 guys, you have, so they'll give me 125 AM for the panel. So the panel size is going to be 125 AM. Cool? For the overcome friction device, Adam, we use the 1.25 from that table times the 83. That will get us um, uh, 83, that will get us 104 cent thing, Chad, 104 amps. Then we take the 104 amps, take it to 240.6, take it to 240.6, and that will give me 110 amps. Now, <clears throat> my panel will be 125, and my overcaptation device main is going to be 110. Is there any problem with that? No. <clears throat> Some engineers, Karen, will uh, look at it and say, you know what, we're very close to the size of a panel. We're going to size everything for 125. That's okay. Okay. The last thing, guys, is panel feeder. The panel feeder match over device. That's my method. So my over device, Adam, 
happen to be a 110 amp. No need to pedal, small conductor. When you guys go there, you're going to have four conductors. Why four? Because we have a neutral. And each one of them is a 2AWGTHHN. Or THHW, whatever the installation is. Typically THHW. Gentlemen, that's about it. Four questions for the test. Straightforward. Write yourself a cheat sheet note and uh, should be in a good shape. Should be in a good shape. Any comments, guys? Any questions? What I'm going to do, I'm going to give you guys 10 minutes <clears throat> and then I'll go over the theory. Shall we? Is that good? Okay, thank you.